We're about to see Sarah Gillis perform her spacewalk. We've yes. just seen Jared Isaacman do that as well. Um, so she'll have about 15 to 20 right. minutes uh, performing this particular spacewalk. Um, and then after that, again, like Jared did, return to her seat and have a, repressuris a repressurization and, uh, right. um, of, the, of the capsule. Kate, the imagery that America has of this is Gemini and Ed White with a rocket in his right hand and an umbilical cord out into space. When they do a spacewalk here, do they have the same sense of umbilical cord? And do they have any propulsion to move them around as they go out of the capsule? Yes, I mean, these new spacesuits are designed for more mobility um, than the traditional spacesuits that we've seen in the past. Um, so they will be performing these mobility tests when they're doing right. the spacewalk. Um, and as we've seen, Jared was doing a few movements there like just to test Sarah out, you know, how the far same, they can go with, uh, with these new spacesuits. Right. Um, but there's, you know, lots of other capabilities with them. Um, they've got thermal materials to make sure that the, the, the crew are the right temperature. They've also so got this heads up display inside so they can see the pressure your oxygen levels really clearly and it's not obstru obstructing their view um, and you know they've also got a camera there so all of these things were tested um, right. before they did the spacewalk that's what was involved in the first sort of 30 minutes of uh, the spacewalk right. process so well, yes yeah I think we should describe this for radio Paul yeah. as well I mean it's a little hard to see in radio but Paul for me after seeing an Apollo or a Gemini or the tragedy of Ed White in that spacewalk yep. dying a few years later with Gus Grissom and Roger Chaffee. This SpaceX capsule looks, I think it looks like a Bentley. I'll leave it up to you, but it may look like some powerboat. I mean, the difference in engineering from nuts and bolts yes. of the Apollo program I to mean, now is I mean, it looks like the inside of, of a Tesla, very comfortable. And yeah, exactly. An extraordinary video, Tom, of these astronauts you know, just kind of sticking their heads out, getting halfway out of the uh, capsule, and they're literally in the depths of the black of space. I can't imagine what they're feeling right now, but these are civilians. This is a commercial spacecraft and a commercial flight. John Davies, this is SpaceX, John. What are, what are really the goals of SpaceX over the next two, three, four years? Well, the, the big thing we're going to see soon is the, the new rocket, um, so the Starship, and the heavy booster, uh, which they're hoping to launch another um, a test flight, uh, probably going to be in November. I think they've run into regulatory delays. That is essential to their forward plans, as I said earlier, to get towards the moon and then, then to Mars, and also to keep their Starlink network growing, uh, which is to, for, to give um, data access to people on the ground. And that's going to be a super exciting launch because the plan is they're going to try and uh, catch it, uh, the, the booster on its way back to Earth rather than abandoning it um, to the sea, uh, just as you do with Falcon 9 at the moment, which is their current rocket, which launched the, the people we see before us now. Right. They land uh, on a booster, and the booster on the sea or at, at land. This one's going to get caught by chopsticks. It's very cool. We welcome all of you across the nation on Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, on YouTube. Please subscribe to Bloomberg Podcast for further aerospace coverage. We're going to continue here. Sarah Gillis now at the lip of Polaris wow. Dawn. And again, as Paul mentioned, for those of you in radio, it's a complete black backdrop. Just think of a black curtain where earlier with Mr. Isaacman out first, we did see the earth in the background, the, yep. the luminescence of the earth uh, as well. Uh, uh, Kate Duffy, help us here with a goal here of SpaceX. Um, our imagery is Matt Damon is on Mars. It's a little more sophisticated than that, isn't it, Kate? Possibly, yes. I mean, that is the idea. You know, SpaceX, they do want to get to Mars. They want to colonize it, um, eventually want to get a base on the moon um, and then to Mars. And the point of these spacesuits, for example, is to scale them up so that eventually they can be used for missions such as this. Um, and, you know, Starlink as well, that's internet in space, which they have been testing actually during the mission. They, I think they phoned their families, it said earlier on, uh, on X. Uh, 
through Starlink Internet. Um, and, you know, launching Starship also is the goal um, of this mission to get to Mars eventually. Um, so all of these, you know, missions that they're doing have a goal, have a target. And this one, although it doesn't have a particular business um, or commercial angle specifically, um, it is part of the portfolio that SpaceX is now growing um, as a business. So it's really interesting to see and even more interesting that this is a commercial company that's able to do this, a first private company. It's just amazing. We're hearing in the, in the background some audio of Sarah Gillis, uh, SpaceX engineer, uh, as she uh, is, is out in space. Kate, I guess my question is, I think Lisa Mateo, Tom Keen, and I, we grew up with NASA were the folks that got you into space. NASA were the folks that put you on the moon. And now it's Jeff Bezos, it's Elon Musk, it's Sir Richard Branson. Talk to us about just the commercialization of space. How broad can this be in the years to come? It's going to take a while, but I think, you know, there is a possibility in the distant future that this could genuinely be a really good business opportunity. Um, at the moment, it's extremely costly. Um, you know, Jared Isaacman, for example, who's one of the crew members, is a billionaire and he's part funded this mission. He also um, helped with the Inspiration4 mission. Um, so it takes a lot of money to get to um, where they want to be and to achieve these sort of commercial goals. Um, and it will take a lot of experiments as well and a lot of failures as we've seen with space um, and, and rocket launch recently no um, but SpaceX are that's that's their that's Thank their goal you. and that's what they want to achieve uh, we're having some camera connection problems here for those of you What's on space? YouTube I mean uh, worldwide <laughs> yeah you know they, yeah, we got camera, camera connection to the zoom from uh, downstairs yeah, <laughs> we, uh, exactly right the Sarah voice you hear Sarah Gillis yep. uh, Sarah the second Sarah person to uh, move into space today maybe not with a drama that we saw yeah, are you ready for this 59 years start. ago Really? It was Ed White and Gemini. Wow. And the entire world stopped for that. It yes. was extraordinary to see at the time. I believe I just heard underneath one minute. Let's listen right now to the back and forth on Polaris Dawn. And you could see the Earth dark, and we flew into like an orbital. All right, and test matrix to time to combine them, so we'll call that complete. Pressure 5.27, 38% humidity, 33.7 Celsius. SpaceX copies matrix complete and HUD readout. With us, uh, Kate Duffy and John Davies, part of our aerospace team. It's been a build out for Bloomberg here, well, for many years, but really with a new momentum in the last 24 months as commercial uh, space technology ramps up. John Davies, let's talk about the rockets. You mentioned earlier there's going to be a big rocket, and of course the technology is far beyond Saturn V. Do we have a rocket right now to propel us to Mars? Well, the, the idea is that the Starship will be able, to, with the Super Heavy booster, will be able to do that um, in time with a slightly slightly larger version than the one they're currently testing so and it's but it's very um, modular technology so if if they start getting the one that they they plan to launch in november to work then you know very much the roadmap is is clear towards getting to mars it's extraordinary can you put yeah. a date on that kate jump in here can you guys like put a date on when we're going to do matt damon i, I think for <laughs> america we're we're i think i'll be honest you guys Great, in london are more on this yeah. than we are when are we going to Mars, Kate Duffy? <laughs> I think that's a really good question. Um, I think the most recent um, date that Elon Musk has given is 2026, is when the next Earth to Mars transfer window opens. Um, but who knows? I mean, this is really sort of volatile technology. Um, it's new. It's always being tested. There are successes and also failures. And, it, you know, Starship, we're just waiting for for that uh, to progress. Um, and it depends on that, really. OK, right now we're having not at the closing of the hatch, but always important to see. And uh, we'll have some camera issues out in space. But SpaceX reporting to us that this will end here in a moment with Sarah Gillis returning to the capsule after uh, Mr. Isaacman and <clears throat> there'll be a closing of the uh, capsule uh, door to what appears to be a successful 
two spacewalks. Uh, Kate Duffy, you first. Final thoughts here as we uh, end this broadcast across a morning in America. But Kate Duffy, your thoughts on what's next for Elon Musk and SpaceX? Well, considering this was um, what seems to be a spacewalk that has gone extremely well, potentially there could be another one down the line. Um, there'll be probably more testing of these spacesuits, um, more scaling up of them. Um, and yeah, I mean, who knows with SpaceX? They've always got something up their sleeve. Um, but hopefully so another Starship launch in, in the works, more satellite launches, obviously, um, more Starlink satellites in space, uh, and just continuing to expand their, their space empire.